Hello and welcome to this next exercise. We're going to look at the multinomial goodness of fit test. So, uh, very similar to other exercises we've done in this module, uh, but actually I think a little bit simpler still. So, what we're looking at, a simple question here, is there a preference in the type of pet that people own? So we have people who own, number of people who own a cat, have 37 cat owners, 120 dog owners, 114 bird, and 100 who have something else, for a total of 431 people that uh, we've talked to. So we want to test to see, do we have evidence to show that this data follows a multinomial probability distribution? So our null hypothesis is that the, pro the proportion of people who have a cat is equal to the proportion of people with a dog, the proportion of people with a bird, and the proportion of people with something else. And they are all equal to, well, here I have one, two, three, I have four different categories. K is equal to four. So this means that each of these probabilities, one over K, one over four, so each of these probabilities would be 0.25. So all of these proportions are the same out of our sample. There's no difference. Uh, I have four different animals, four different pets, 25% on each of them. So that's what our null hypothesis is, that they're all equally preferred. And the alternative is that not all are 0.25 as straightforward as that, I hope. Alpha is 0.05 and the test statistic that we need, you are going to be so familiar with this one. It's our observed frequency minus our expected squared over our expected and I don't really need I and J because we only have one. So this is just the I, I, I and we add those up across uh, our four different values. So first thing that we need to do, the same as always, is calculate our expected frequencies. Now here it's a little bit easier than what we had done before. We have a, a, a common proportion estimate here is 0.25. We expect that a quarter of our sample will like a cat, a quarter of the sample a dog, a quarter of the sample a bird. So to calculate those expected frequencies, well, we have 431 people that we spoke to. If our null hypothesis is true, we would expect cat, dog, bird, and other, they would all be equal, and they would all be equal to a quarter of that total. So all of those expected frequencies, they're all going to be the same, and they'll all be equal to 0.25 times 431. So 0.25 times 431, grab that calculator, 0.25 is already there, times, point four, uh, times 431, so 107.75. And it's the same for all four of them. So now what we need to do is calculate those differences, square them, divide the same process again and again. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'll calculate starting here. So it'll be 97 minus the expected value squared divided by the expected value. So let me grab my calculator here. We'll go through, go through these. So our expected value uh, for the cats. So I have 170 point, uh, uh, sorry, 107 times 0.75 minus 97. I guess I'm doing this backwards, but we're squaring it anyway, so it doesn't really matter what order we do them in. 1075, we square that, we divide it by the expected frequency, 107.75, so I have 1.07. So there's my first value in this calculation, 1.07. Now the next one, we use our observed number of dog owners. So this is 120 minus 107.75 squared divided by 107.75. And I have 1 1.4. 1 1.4. And let's just do the next one. So now we'll do the birds. So it'll be 114. 
114 minus 107.75 squared divided by 107.75, so 0.36. And the next and last, 100 minus 107.75 oh, squared. What have I done? Hang on, try this again. 100 minus 107.75 square that divided by 107.75, 0.56. So there's all those individual values. Now we just need to add all of those up to get our test statistic. So 1.07 plus 1.4 plus 0.36 and 0.56 and I have 3.39. There, a little bit faster than some of those other ones that we looked at in this module. So I have a test statistic of 3.39. We'll, we'll look for a critical value. Uh, alpha is 0.05. Degrees of freedom is just k minus 1. So this is going to be 4 minus 1. So I'll have 3 degrees of freedom. So we go to our chi-squared tables. 3 degrees of freedom. Alpha is 0.5. So I have a critical value of 7.815. 7 7.815. And we reject if our test statistic is greater than or equal to that critical value. In our case, clearly 3.39 is smaller than 7.8. Oops. 7.815. So we do not reject. We have insufficient evidence to reject this. Do not reject this null, uh, null hypothesis. We're unable to show that uh, this distribution is not a multinomial uh, probability distribution. Uh, let's get our p-value approach. As our p-value for this exercise as well. So same thing. We go to our test, uh, our, our chi-squared tables. I feel like this is getting so repetitive. We've done this so many times now. Go to our chi-squared tables. Our test statistic is 3.39. We're still in that three degrees of freedom. 3.39, well, it's somewhere in here, so that p-value is, is something huge anyways. So our p-value is something greater than 0.1, less than 0.9, which is trivial and irrelevant anyway. So the fact that it's greater than and probably much greater than uh, 0.1, that's consistent with our decision not to reject. So in this data, again, we have insufficient to evidence uh, to reject that null hypothesis uh, that uh, this is not a multinomial uh, probability distribution uh, with a probability of 0.25. So that's it. These pets are all just equally loved, or at least they're equally owned. I don't know if they're equally loved. So that's it. Uh, we'll do a couple more exercises, I think, on this topic, and then that'll be it. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.